Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today, we're checking out a summing box and mixing console that makes an ideal centerpiece for any studio. Let's get started. I've been having some fun lately because I've been mixing through the Box 2 from API. The Box 2 is a summing box and a mixing console. It has three different sections. We've got eight input channels, and we'll take a tour of those later. Then we have 16 summing channels, and we have a center section as well that controls all our monitoring and our source select. Let's begin the tour on the left-hand side of the console where we have our eight input channels. Now these are more full-featured channels. They have a mic preamp, they have a line input, and they also have an instrument input on the first four of those. At the top of each input channel, we have a 500 series slot. Now when you purchase the box two, there's nothing loaded into those slots, but you can add in just about any 500 series module that you want. You can't put in input modules like preamp modules, those kind of things, but they're ideal for compressors and EQs, and we've got those loaded up with optional API modules at this point. The way the signal path works is we come in the preamp and the first thing we actually hit is that 500 series slot. Following that we have a balanced insert and you access that on the back panel. We've got balanced input and balanced output for use with external gear. We continue through to aux sends and then we've got pan, fader and so on as well as assignments. In the center of the channel strip we have our preamp controls. We've got 48 volt phantom power, polarity invert, a 20 dB pad and then we can select between mic and line input. On the first four channels, when you assign that to mic and you plug into the quarter inch jack on the front panel of the console, you'll be able to route an instrument level signal in, and in that case we have a 6 dB pad. Our gain control sets the input level, and we also have a high pass filter at 50 Hz. Now an interesting feature of this console is that we actually have two compressors here in the center section. Normally you'd use those on the program outputs, but you can also assign those to the first four channels. When you do that, they typically show up at the very beginning of the signal path. So we'd come in preamp, then compressor, 500 series slot, and then insert. But you can also choose to route those compressors after the insert. So in that case, we'd go preamp, 500 series, insert, then the compressor. So you have that option, and that's controlled by this switch here. Each input channel has an eight segment LED meter, and we can choose where it takes its signal from, either pre or post fader. We engage the insert with this switch, and we can also take a direct out from two different locations in the signal path. We can choose to take it directly after the preamp, or we can choose to take it after all of the processing in the channel. Next up we have our aux send section for the channel. We've got two mono aux sends, one and two, and we turn those off together using this switch, and we can assign those either pre or post fader. We have a separate gain control or level control for each of those aux sends. Above those we have aux sends three and four, which is a stereo send. We can choose to route those to the Q-mix, which would feed the headphones, and we can choose to take that pre or post fader, and we have both a pan control as well as a level control for that aux end. The aux ends are quite flexible. You could use those to feed headphone sends when you're tracking, and they can also be used for effect sends during mix down. Following the aux ends, we have the pan control for the input channel, and then our program assignment. This assigns it to the stereo program output. We also have a safe switch. Now the safe switch is very interesting because it affects the operation of solo in one of the three solo modes. There are three different solo modes available inside the box too. There's AFL which takes its signal after the fader, PFL which takes its signal before the fader, and then SIP or solo in place. Now this is an interesting mode because it's destructive. That means that you actually hear it through the program bus. And that's where this safe switch comes in. When you have that safe switch depressed and you're in solo in place mode, when you solo a track, it doesn't mute anything that's been solo safed. And speaking of solo, next up we have our solo for the channel, our mute for the channel, and then our 100 millimeter fader. The eight input channels would typically be used for microphone, line, or instrument level signals when you're tracking. But when you're mixing, they can also serve as an additional eight summing inputs, giving you a total of 24 inputs when you're summing during mix down. Speaking of summing, let's jump over to the right side of the console and check out the 16 summing inputs. The 16 summing inputs are each individual input, so you can use them as mono inputs, but since they have pan controls, you can also set them up as stereo pairs. And for the sake of space, they've arranged them into groups of two. So we have input one, input two, input three, input four, and so on, and the faders for each of those two channels are grouped together down here at the bottom. Starting at the top of each summing input, we have a zero dB switch. Now that switch bypasses the fader. So if you're doing a lot of fader automation inside your DAW, you don't want to mess with the fader here on the front of the mixer, 
you can just set that to zero dB, bypasses the fader, and sets you to zero dB automatically. Each of our summing inputs also has a balanced insert. There's a separate balanced output, balanced input, and you can turn that on and off using this switch here. Next to those two switches, we have a four segment level LED. Just like on the eight input channels, we have our aux ends, two mono, two stereo, and we have the same switching control, on off for each aux, as well as pre post, and then Q routing for the stereo aux. Each summing channel has its own pan control, we can assign to the program bus, and we also have solo safe, just like on the eight input channels. Jumping down to the bottom, we've got a solo for each summing input, we've got mute for each summing input, and a 100 millimeter fader for each summing input. There's a lot of interesting features in the center section of the box too. Beginning at the top, we have two of API's 527 compressors. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can assign those to the program bus, so we can link those into stereo and use those on our stereo output bus. We can also choose to route those to channels one through four. So the top one can be routed to channel one or channel three. The bottom one can be routed to channel two or channel four, and we choose where that's routed using the program channel switch. We can also independently bypass the two compressors. We have independent threshold, ratio, hard and soft knee. And a very interesting feature is the old new switch. In old mode, the compressor is operating as a feedback compressor. This is the way that a more traditional compressor would work where the signal is taken after the VCA. This gives you a more transparent operation. In the new setting, the signal is taken before the VCA. This gives you a little bit more aggressive compressor effect. The two compressors also feature API's thrust feature. Now this is a high pass filter that's in the detector. It allows you to maintain more punch in the bottom end. Rounding things out, we have attack and release for each compressor, and then that stereo link switch. Below the compressors, we have our source selection for our control room monitors and for our Q output. This can be program, which is our stereo output, or any one of four two-track inputs. And we can independently assign those for our control room monitors and for our headphone or Q mix. We can also choose to route the control room source to the Q mix as well. Below this, we have controls for the control room output, and we can have two sets of stereo monitors connected and switch between those using the alt switch. We have separate level controls for them as well. We also have a dim level control that's controlled by the switch at the bottom. We can mono the stereo output, and we can also mute the stereo output. The Q-Mix has a source level control, as well as a master output level control. And this is where we set after fade listen or AFL or pre-fade listen mode for our solo. Next up, we have a level control for the incoming source for the Q-Mix, as well as a master volume control for our Q-Mix. We can also set whether the Q-Mix solo is AFL or PFL. Below this is a solo master section, again, AFL, PFL, and this is also where we set that solo in place feature. And we can clear all the solos with this button. We have a headphone level control, we can route the Q-Mix to the headphones, and we have on-off for headphones as well. The Box 2 features a built-in talkback system. We have a level control for the built-in mic, which is up here. We can choose to slate, route to aux, or route to Q, and then we have on-off for the talkback mic. Next up in the center section, we have our aux masters. This is a master level control for each of our aux outputs, as well as a choice of AFL or PFL soloing for those auxes. The stereo master bus, or the program output on the Box 2, also has its own insert. That's a balanced insert, and you engage that using the program insert here. There's also a separate stereo program sum in. So if you're using an external submixer, or you're chaining two boxes together, you can activate that input using program sum here. The back panel of the Box 2 features a full complement of connections. We've got inputs for the input channels as well as for the summing inputs. We've got various outputs. We can route through all the auxes, all the cue outs, multiple sets of monitors, all those inserts, and so on. I've really enjoyed spending some time with the Box 2. I set it up with a Lynx Aurora N, great sounding interface, routed 16 outputs from the interface into the summing inputs, and sat down to do a little mixing. And everything just sounded great as soon as I plugged it in and started playback. That API summing bus really does add some magic. Being able to do mixing right here in front of you with the fader, having pan controls, being able to route to auxes, when you're recording, having access to those 500 series modules, and being able to apply inserts to everything that you want gives you so much flexibility. The Box 2 really does make a great centerpiece for any studio. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Box 2 from API, really an incredible piece of gear. You definitely want to check this one out. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.